Jeff understands that the job of Attorney General is to serve and protect the people of the United States. And that is exactly what he will do and do better than anybody else can. Jeff Sessions was a disaster as Attorney General. Should have never been Attorney General. He's not qualified. He's not mentally qualified to be Attorney General. We hope Bill Barr is going to be as good as we think because Bill is a good, he's a great gentleman, a great man. And by the way, when Bill Barr, who's, you know, a coward, Bill Barr was a coward. Bill Barr didn't do what he was supposed to do. I fired him and he has great hatred. In his new role as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Milley will serve as my top military advisor. I have absolute confidence that he will fulfill his duty with the same brilliance and fortitude he has shown throughout his long and very distinguished career. Milley, frankly, was incompetent. The last one I'd want to attack with as my leader would be Milley. John Kelly will do a fantastic job. General Kelly has been a star done an incredible job thus far, respected by everybody, a great, great American. I know John Kelly. He was with me, didn't do a good job, had no temperament, and ultimately he was petered out. He got, he was exhausted. This man was totally exhausted. He wasn't even able to function. I am confident that Jay has the wisdom and leadership to guide our economy through any challenges that our great economy may face. And, you know, I had my own situation with Powell, and I beat the hell out of him. I was not a big fan of Powell. I was rec he was recommended by some people. I didn't like him. We are going to appoint yeah. Mad Dog Mattis as our Secretary of Defense. They say he's the closest thing to General George Patton that we have, and it's about time. It's about time. Mattis was a highly overrated general, didn't do the job, didn't do good on ISIS. Mattis was fired, as you know, by President Obama, and I fired him also. Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State. <laughs> going to do a great job. He's respected all over the world, and I think he's going to go down as one of our great, great secretaries. In an angry tweet this morning, he called Tillerson, quote, dumb as a rock and totally ill-prepared and ill-equipped to be Secretary of State. Mark Esper, who is a highly respected gentleman with a great career, West Point, Harvard, uh, a tremendous talent, who's just named Acting Secretary of Defense. He has said, quote, you, he was, you were a lightweight, a figurehead. He said Mark Esper was weak, totally ineffective. Uh, he said uh, he would do anything I wanted. Secretary Chow, you've been so fantastic in so many ways. Transportation, it's just moving along. And you, uh, you've done a fantastic job for me and for the country, and I appreciate all, all that you do. In his post on Truth Social, Trump said, McConnell, quote, has a death wish and must immediately seek help and advice from his China-loving wife, Coco Chow. Oh, my God. Donald Trump so quick to turn on his very own best people the moment they start telling the truth about him. In an interview on Fox News last night, host Brett Baer pressed him on this point. We put people in that were great, and we put people in that weren't. I now know Washington probably better than anybody. I know the good ones and the bad ones, and we will have really great, strong people. I already know who they are, but we will have really great, strong people. Okay, in 2016, you said that. I'm going to surround myself with only the best and most serious people. Well, I did do that. This and we time, had tremendous look. We had the best economy we've ever had. The this world time has ever seen. Your vice president, Mike Pence, is running against you. Yeah. Your ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she's running against you. Your former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned National Security Advisor John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr, uh, says you shouldn't be president again. I uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. You recently called and uh, Barr a, a gutless pig. Uh, you're 
second defense secretary is not supporting you, called you irresponsible. This week, you and your White House called your White House chief of staff, John Kelly, weak and ineffective and born with a very small brain. You called your acting White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, a born loser. You called your first secretary of state, Rex Tillerson, dumb as a rock. And your first defense secretary, James Mattis, the world's most overrated general. You called your White House press secretary, Kayla Kennedy, milk toast. And multiple times, you've referred to your transportation secretary, Elaine Chao, as Mitch McConnell's China-loving wife. So why did you hire all of them in the first place? Because I hired 10 to 1 that were fantastic. We had a great economy. We had phenomenal people in charge of the economy. We had phenomenal people in the military. I'm not a fan of Milley, and I'm not a fan of certain of the television people. But I knocked out ISIS. I defeated ISIS. They said, Mattis, it would take three years, and I don't think we can do it. I did it in a period of, like, four weeks. There's a lot of people who praise you for your policies. I just said true. that. That's true. Well, I mean, you just went through a list. But don't forget, for every one you say, I had ten that love us. No, no I don't doctor. think so. It was isolated. Jonathan Lemire, Elise Jordan, yeah. Claire McCaskill still with us. Wow. I mean, Brett Baer kind of nailed him on a number of fronts here in terms of hypocrisy, lying, and just being a plain, weak leader. Joining the discussion, we have contributing writer for The Atlantic and senior fellow at the Trinity Forum, Peter Weiner. And you know, it's good to have you on. You know, he was so morning. isolated at the end. He was yeah. isolated. Well, in he's the isolated now. Yeah. Look at like you remember, like in the beginning of his campaign, and even during his time in the White House, he always had Ivanka there. Right. He gave her a job in the White House. She and right. Jared. It was all so weird. Yeah. She's disappeared completely. Well, let alone everybody else. Well, everybody he's alone. Else so, Pete Weiner, uh, you've uh, you've written a good bit about Donald Trump. I think. I have. But we're focusing on, we focus on Donald Trump, but it's hard not to focus on people who are still in the Trump sort of cult or under Trump's right. persuasion. I mean, you look at all of these things. Jeff Sessions, he can do the job better than anybody else. And then he's a disaster. He, he, he not, not qualified. Millie, absolute he's confidence in people. his brilliance uh, and fortitude. He's had a brilliant career. After a year or two, he calls him incompetent. Uh, I could go through it. You know, Bill Barr went from a great man to be to being a gutless pig. And it goes on and on and on. You know, this whole idea that, oh, Donald Trump, he can fix it alone. Donald Trump will hire the best people. It's just been proven to be a lie time and time and time again. And the question is, if that doesn't persuade people, will nuclear, stealing nuclear secrets persuade people? Probably not, uh, unfortunately. I mean, it's going to persuade uh, a lot of fair-minded people, and I think the majority of the public is going to be disturbed by it. But in terms of the Republican Party, the base of the party, and the core of Trump supporters, uh, I think we have long passed the point where there's any line that he can cross, anything that he can do that's going to uh, be too far for them. It is a fascinating and deeply disturbing psychological phenomenon that we're seeing uh, unfold. It's happened throughout history, and it's happened time now and then in this country, but never on this scale and never with a, a presidential candidate or former president like, uh, like Donald Trump. So will there be some erosion? Potentially, but not much. And as we've seen, uh, w whether it's a coup attempt, whether it's a violent insurrection, whether it's a civil case in which he sexually harassed a woman, uh, he can pretty much get away with anything with these people. And that, by the way, is, I think there are two stories here in terms of historically. One is that we had what's essentially a sociopath as president, a man with a disordered personality. That's always been true of Donald Trump. But the other thing is the complicity of an entire political party, the Republican Party, that went along with him. And that they could have stopped him at, at any point along this, this uh, torturous road, and they never have. And, um, and I think there's going to be a huge historical price to pay, but there's a huge moral and political price for the country right now. Well, I mean, you know, again, I, I talked about yesterday, Pete, after we read, read your column in the, from The Atlantic, that, that, you know, these same people are people that were hounding me uh, in, in 99 to vote against uh, Bill Clinton on all four articles of impeachment. Right. Well, I said, well, we probably need to listen to the evidence first. 
they freaked out yeah. and said, yeah. said, the man is not fit morally to be there. America's in decline. It's the end of our repu constitutional yeah. republic yeah. because he's immoral. So let me just say, of course, this has all changed. I don't have to name, you know, the payoffs to the porn stars and all the other things that they're just turning a blind eye to. It's accepted. I mean, you say in your column, the majority of Trump enablers still know right from wrong. But let me ask you something. It's our tribe. Right? So if Donald Trump has a disorder, if he's a sociopath, what went so horribly wrong with our tribe, whether we're talking about mm -hmm. Repu our Republican tribe, our conservative tribe, or our evangelical tribe? Why weren't there more Tim Kellers out there? Why weren't there more Pete Wainers out there? Why weren't there more Russell Moores out there? Yeah, and, and Joe Scarborough's and, and, and others. Look, it's a question that I've wrestled with for a long time. Uh, one way I think about it is how many of these dark impulses existed pre-Trump in the Republican Party that I wasn't as alert to as I should have been. Uh, you know, if you go back over my writings, I called the Republicans out now and then. Looking back, I probably didn't do it nearly um, enough. Apart from that, what's gone on is the, uh, y you had a situation in which I think there were deep feelings of grievance and resentments that Trump tapped into. And you saw this psychological accommodation because once they threw their hat over the wall in 2016 when he got the nomination, it was one thing after another after another. And if you study human psychology, the capacity of human beings to rationalize and justify what they do in order to, to mitigate what's called cognitive dissonance, that is a sense that your values are at odds with what you've stated, is enormous. I think there was power, longing for power because he was president. I think there was fear of the base. I think there was cowardice. I think there was a hollow moral core and this sort of self-deception. Self but it is an unbelievably puzzling thing, I think particularly for people like you and I, Joe, and, and others who are Republicans. It's probably why we've had the energy that we do on this issue, because this is a party we belong to. And to see what it's doing, the kind of wrecking ball, a civic wrecking ball, a political wrecking ball, a moral wrecking ball, uh, it's disturbing for anybody, but particularly from, from people uh, who, were, who were formerly associated with the Republican Party. They should well, have seen I, this. I, it was obvious yeah. that this guy was going to be what he was, turned out to be.